Alrighty, um, <clears throat> welcome back. I am Dad Bod Man, Ethan Leslie. Uh, I'm here today uh, with Tanache. Am I saying that correctly? All right. Uh, doing good, doing good. I'm glad you uh, you came back on, and we can actually have a chance to talk about this this time. Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, there's a platform that I know. You know, I'm more familiar with Zoom, <laughs> so Absolutely. you know, haven't failed me yet let's say in a way where you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah. uh, could you tell us a little bit about who you are and you know what you do and, and I guess why people should should listen to you well you know uh, by day you know I'm a video editor that's what I do you know I've had the opportunity to edit music videos for people like Yellow Wolf, KCAP, BB Rex uh, you know got to work with Pharrell on his podcast for Apple Music you know uh, video podcast that is you know just uh yeah, you know, video editing has been, you know, my, my spiel. I'm self-taught. Started nice. teaching myself when I was like uh, 12 years old. And, you know, I happened to stumble up, uh, upon crypto about five, six years ago. Yeah. And since then, man, it's been my world too, you know, studying it, getting it in my veins, you mm -hmm. know. So, you know, I, I, you know, I've been making people money with it too. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so could you could you tell us a little bit about what you know? Uh, I saw that you you're are you teaching a class now? Or are you teaching people what it is and and what it's about? Yeah, yeah. You know, like as you can see, there's a presentation. You know, the front page is the presentation that I have up right now. Mm -hmm. So you know, I teach people about crypto. I give them you know insights about it, what it's about, the companies behind it, what companies are building on the blockchain. Uh, platform gotcha. because that's where the value really is at the blockchain technology. Okay. So, could you tell us a little bit what uh, about what the blockchain actually is and, and you know what its uses are? Yeah, you know, and I think we can use this um, PowerPoint presentation to guide us and your questions too. That may arise. Okay. From, uh, can you look at it? So, what is a blockchain? Like you just asked. Basically, it is a ledger. You know, it records everything that's happening in real time. It's decentralized and distrib distributed. It's a distributed network. Okay. So currently, you know, like to give you a visual example, the world we live in is very centralized. Mm -hmm. So you see this central blue point right here where my mouse is over. Yes. So if this was to go down, all these other points would have no point of data. Okay. You know, but all be lost. Mm -hmm. You know, with a decentralized network, we have different points that are connected and sharing data against in, with other pods. You know, let's call these little circles pods. But the thing is that if, let's say, the central point of connection was to get lost, then these pods would not have the data. Gotcha. Okay. But then blockchain is distributed and decentralized, meaning every pod is connected. So okay. think about that pod as a computer. So all these computers are connected together, sharing information. So each computer is getting a copy of that ledger, okay. of that data. So that's what makes it decentralized and distributed. That's what the blockchain is bunch of computers together sharing data in real time and that data cannot be changed by any of the computers in the network okay so that in essence built what the blockchain is yeah so now as far as companies actually utilizing this like what are some some benefits to uh companies starting to adopt this type of, of technology you know I, I you've pointed out that if one you know in a centralized network uh one point goes down basically everything goes down um and so clearly there's there's advantages to it but are there you know uh are there some other advantages that that aren't so point and blank clear you know since it's distributed network and these computers are sharing the same data Let's say a foreign computer tries to access the network. We've heard about hospitals and staff mm -hmm. getting hacked, their data. See, with blockchain technology, it's very secure, you know, and it's hard to hack. It's yeah. pretty much impossible to hack, okay. you know. So if the computer was to try and join that network, 
it would be recognized mm -hmm. that a foreign computer is trying to join the network. So okay. security is a very, very high point in blockchain technology. At the same way, it's transparent, even on private networks. Yep. It will help with like auditing, you know, because the data is recorded in real time. It cannot be changed. So for like banking, finance, accounting, and companies, this will really help in combating embezzlement mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, because since it's on a network of computers that are each getting a copy of transactions in real time, you know. You can't, you can't, you can't just exactly. cover it up. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're going to have to go and access every computer, yeah. Yeah. you know, and cover that up. And, you know, you can use it too for real estate and, you know, a bunch of other applications. Okay, and so now with blockchain uh, comes cryptocurrency, and and now what are those exactly? Are they you know are they the same thing? Are they what are they? What's the difference? You know, uh, and could so, you tell us a little bit about that? So that that takes me to the next slide. Oh, okay, Bitcoin and blockchain. <laughs> you know, so Satoshi Nakamoto is the creator of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin runs on blockchain. So if I'm to send you money right now, remember how we had the picture of the, you know, yeah. distributed network, you know, the blockchain? A computer is going to process that transaction and we call it a miner. You okay. Know, like mining, you know, miners mm -hmm. that used to like mine gold and stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Same concept, you know. So a computer will mine that block. You know, my transaction to you is put in a block. Okay. And so that block, once processed, is going to be shared amongst the other computers in the network. Okay. You know? okay. And everything is recorded chronologically from since the beginning of Bitcoin up until now. We can trace every single transaction that's yeah. happened on the blockchain for Bitcoin. Okay. And so that's how that the cryptocurrencies work as well. They have their own individual blockchains. Gotcha. You know? And so, you know, um, every computer that's connected, like I say, in that distributed network gets a copy mm -hmm. of that blockchain. So what know? what is what is protecting, you know, what I know it's I know it's not as simple as, oh, my they have my data, you know, they can access it. So what is what are the protections as far as making sure that your data is secure or that your, you know, your cryptos are secure? See, you get a key. You know, let's say you download a wallet, mm -hmm. you get a key that's to you. Only you can have that key. Okay. If you lose that key, nobody can help you get that information back. <laughs> you All know? right. So you have to write it down, you know, whatever the information is. It could be 12, uh, 12 uh, word sequence, 24 mm -hmm. word sequence. And so when you get that, when you create a wallet, let's say desktop wallet, for stuff on Coinbase and stuff, they keep your keys, so you're fine. Okay. But if you're keeping your own keys with your own wallets, you need to store that, you know, write it down, put it in a safe, don't ever lose <laughs> that. Because 10 years from now, you can find those keys and reaccess your wallet. 20 years uh, okay. from now. That's a great thing, you know. So each key is... Uh, what do you call it? Each key is uh, unique to your wallet. Gotcha. Okay. You know, and remember, everything is recorded in the blockchain. Mm -hmm. so that key is attached to the wallet. So whatever transactions happen to that wallet are attached to that key. Okay. So let's say you lose your computer, you lose your hard drive, mm -hmm. you know, your computer is stolen or whatever. You have that key. You can put that key in. And it'll go search on the blockchain the last transactions that happened to that wallet oh, okay. associated with those keys. That's the beautiful thing about blockchain technology. Yeah. Not if it's lost, you can always access stuff. But if you lose it, it's gone forever. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, so, uh, could you tell us like when when Bitcoin first started? It, it you know, was. Uh, it's now an absurd amount of money for Bitcoin. So, so yeah. where did that start? I mean, was it was it pennies? Was it less than pennies? Like, how did that exactly grow from that to what is uh, whatever it's at right now? Well, you know, the, uh, it started at pennies, and the thing about Bitcoin is that there'll only ever be twenty one million okay. Bitcoin in circulation. You know, compared to the trillions of dollars that get printed every year, mm -hmm. 
So imagine seven billion people. Let's even take one billion people. Imagine if each person is buying Bitcoin. Right now, there's only 19 million Bitcoin. Oh, you know, yeah. so it increases demand because it's so rare. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why uh, the value of Bitcoin is uh, increasing. So is it starting to get more accepted as far as uh, forms of payment go and, and, and those other types of things like that? Or is it still kind of, uh, we don't really want to mess with that because it's not, it's, 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 it's still too volatile? The, um, it is starting to get accepted uh, as a form of payment, mm -hmm. you know, and there are companies out there that are facilitating that and it's going to come up in one of the slides that okay. I've uh, prepared for this. You know? Okay. So, you know, I, you know, <laughs> that, that question will be answered along with the company that's uh, working on facilitating the use of crypto, which is really going to be a big, big uh, game changer okay. to the finance and uh, see what we have ah, right here. It's on the next slide, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah. What are altcoins? You know, anything that is not... Um, Bitcoin is called an altcoin. Okay. You know, so if you ever hear people talk about altcoins, they're talking about anything that's not Bitcoin. They work in the similar principle. Gotcha. Okay. You know, they have their own blockchain. Mm -hmm. But altcoins, you know, Bitcoin is only like a form, like if you're asking a form of, you know, payment. That's all it does. It's got no other application. Yeah. But there are other companies that are building on the blockchain to give more use oh, you know okay. real world use yeah. for example sia you know or shia you know however people mm -hmm. pronounce that they're creating a distributed blockchain based on cloud storage so we could set up computer servers where people could store you know their files and everything for a cheaper price than aws oh. amazon web services and so remember, Amazon Web Services is centralized. Yeah. So if Amazon Web Services goes offline, Facebook goes, goes offline. Off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we you know people stuff you know like Instagram and stuff like that goes down and people are freaking out. Yeah. It's because Amazon Web Services or yeah. whoever is hosting mm -hmm. that you know application or you know whatever has gone down. But with stuff like Sia, remember. They're trying to distribute it, yeah. you know, okay. network. So if one server goes down, the data is shared amongst a bunch of computers. So it's okay, yeah. So it'll continue working. You wow. Know? So this is another case in how blockchain technology is really going to disrupt, you yeah. know, markets like yeah. what Amazon has, the Amazon Web Services and stuff like that. And you're asking about spending crypto. There's a company called Swipe. You know, I mentioned it in my blockchain group when it was 45 cents before news leaked out that Binance was going to buy Swipe because Swipe uh -huh. makes uh, cards that you can use to buy, you know, with Visa. You can go to the store and it converts your crypto into money. So you can, oh, you, know, wow. so, you know, if you have like $1,000 in crypto in your account with Swipe, you can just use that and that'll be converted at the store. Wow. Yeah. So imagine, you know, like there's so many uses. For oh, this. yeah. Like, you can really move off the grid with something like Swipe. If you're yeah. just in crypto, you know, and you have your money stored there, you know, like in bank accounts, you know, oh, yeah. like banks are in, in, in trouble, you know. So Binance bought Swipe and Swipe went from 45 cents to about four dollars oh wow and now it's averaging about three dollars and fifty cents one of my friends put like when it was uh, 45 cents he put in like five thousand dollars and that turned to forty thousand dollars in one month wow <laughs> wow know? so this was like from the end of june to pretty much like two weeks ago yeah you know, he made like forty thousand dollars jeez why you know so swipe is really trying to bring um the use of crypto and uh to like you know purchasing yeah you know so they have their own debit cards which will be linked to your binance account because binance is a company that bought swipe so if you store your crypto on binance you can use your swipe card 
Oh, and wow. then we've got a company like Phantom. You know, Phantom are really, you know, right now they're working on uh, with Afghanistan in uh, combating counterfeit medicine. Okay. So basically, uh, they have medicine that you can scan to see if it's authentic. Uh-huh. Because, it, you know, they store, you know, like certificates of authentication on the blockchain. Okay, I got you. So, so it can pull you know, it. That, yeah, it can pull it and let you know if this is real or not. Yeah. You know, if it's huh. a one. You know, um, they're working with governments around the world to create digital uh, currency, like mm-hmm. central bank digital currencies. And another awesome thing that they're working on is uh, decentralized finance, which is like their own loan marketplace. Oh, okay. So over here in America, when you go to the bank, they're looking at your credit, mm-hmm. you know, and all that what you can hold is collateral in order to pay back your loan. But with Phantom, you can put up your crypto is collateral oh. and they give you money. Wow. You know, and then once you pay back what they've given you, then you get your crypto back. Huh. Okay. You know? And they're, they're working on so many other things with that use case, you know, Yeah. Uh, that I can get into uh, more detail about, but I could go on, <laughs> you know, um, but Phantom is really something people should be looking into because okay. they're working on a lot of awesome, awesome chain, you know, things that are going to yeah. really disrupt the world. Ethereum is pretty much building like a uh, uh, computer operating system on the blockchain. Oh, where wow. People can create their own apps and stuff yeah. that run on Ethereum. Wow. So imagine if Facebook was built on Ethereum, you know. Yeah. It shouldn't go down, yeah, you know, because it's on the distributed network mm-hmm. and all that. Instagram, you know, so like the future of apps and stuff will definitely be moving to blockchain. And then another example that I've over here is uh, Syscoin, you know, and they're building like where you can have your own storefronts on the blockchain and a bunch of stuff, you know, for running, you know, yeah. business is you know, okay, yeah, so you can run your own storefront. You know, create your own storefront on Syscoin, and you can accept cryptocurrencies there. Oh, you know, okay. Then you'd be able to like convert them into you know US dollar. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, so the the process of converting that is that is that you know do you do you go through Coinbase and you just tran- and you just withdraw it like it, it, how does that what is that process like and it, can that be confusing as well? Um. It might seem confusing, but it's very straightforward. Um, I explain exchanges towards the end. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) My apologies. No, no, that's fine. Um, But it's not complicated at all. But I feel like once I get to exchanges, it'll kind of make sense. Gotcha. I explain it. Uh, Yeah. Let's see what's up with the next. Oh, yeah. Uh, This is the next slide that I have up. There's actually a website called coinmarketcap.com where you can actually track the value of diff- of all the cryptocurrencies. Okay. It shows them according to market capitalization. Over here, I have an example of Tron, um, which is one of the cryptocurrencies. Mm-hmm. Remember how I was saying that um, Bitcoin would only have 21 million in circulation? Yeah. Tron has 100 billion that total that it could have in circulation, which is a large amount. Yeah. You know? I'm just using this as an example. Uh Normally, when I'm looking at cryptocurrency, I look at the circulating supply as well as the total supply. I I normally like something with like, you know, from a billion to 45 billion. Okay. You know, though that's my kind of like, you know, limit. (laughs) Yeah. If it's got a hundred million to one billion, it piques my interest even more. Okay. If it's got less than a hundred million, it piques my interest way more yeah. because if there's more circulating, it's going to take more money from people investing in it for the price to go up. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. It's not rare. You know, Bitcoin only has 19 million. So that's why it has huge price jumps, mm-hmm. you know? So market capitalization is pretty much um, the current price multiplied by the circulating supply. Okay. That's how you can calculate the market. Cap- capitalization 
And on coin market cap, it's by default set up um, with market cap as the how it you know from high market yeah, cap okay. to low market cap. You know, so Bitcoin is at the top because mm -hmm. it's got the highest the market capitalization followed by the rest. And you know, it, coin market cap will also show you the volume. That's okay. how much has been traded in the last 24 hours. You know, another cool thing about coinmarketcap.com, we show you the charts, the historical chart, where, you know, the price jumps. Okay, yeah, like yeah. And another cool thing about it is if you hit markets, right here at the bottom, markets, uh, markets here, mm -hmm. it will show you, a, you know, it will show a page at the bottom of where you can buy that cryptocurrency on what okay. exchange is, you know. So I have a lot of people that will ask me, you know, like if I mention a cryptocurrency, they're like, oh, where can I buy it? If they come on coinmarketcap.com and look it up and then hit markets, it will actually show them where that crypto is okay. um, available. No. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Uh, so now you go on there and you have, you have to create, do you have to create an account or you can just go on there and just, and just look at it all? For coin market cap, you don't have to create an account. That's just the listing. You know, gotcha. valuations okay. of uh, the different crypto out there. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, another important thing, you know, like when uh, look uh, researching a crypto, if you know, let's say uh, Tron, for example, going back to Coin Market Cap, it mm -hmm. always has a website, official website. So when you click on the official website, it'll show you a bunch of information on the crypto, the team, and whatnot. But it's always important to also read the white paper and the roadmap. Okay. The white paper pretty much is their business plan. They're explaining what they're trying to achieve with that crypto. Okay. This is our goal. This is the market we want to enter. This is how we want to disrupt it. This is what's wrong with the market currently with centralization. Okay. This is how we're going to fix it with decentralization. That, you know, all legitimate crypto have a white paper. It's peer reviewed, you know. Okay. If it's not peer reviewed, if they don't have a white paper, <laughs> that's a red flag for me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Roadmaps are pretty much what they plan to do each quarter, quarterly. Okay. You know, so it's it's like a very it's like a condensed white paper. You know, it's not yeah. even that much detail. It's like you know, first quarter twenty twenty want to achieve this. Second quarter twenty twenty want to achieve this. Gotcha. And if they're able to achieve those things, it normally helps in increasing the price and value of the crypto. You know, it's okay. kind of like yeah. the stocks. You know, if Tesla hits their targets, the price goes up. Yeah. If they don't hit their targets, people start <laughs> selling off. Yeah. So a roadmap is kind of a way to like keep up. You know, and like for me, I use roadmaps for predictions for future trends. You know. Okay. So if a company has a roadmap that's like five years ahead, you know, like five years detailed. I start using that as a way to pinpoint, like, you know, maybe something will happen here. Maybe something yeah. will, when they hit this part, there could be a price jump, you know, exponentially, mm -hmm. you know. I got gotcha. you. So okay. That's not a thing. So, yeah, it's always important to read white papers and roadmaps when getting into crypto, you know, instead of just throwing money into things you don't know. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's good to, uh, study the understand what you're what you're kind of investing in and, and understand who exactly. they are yep exactly you know and then there are forums as well you know okay. bitcoinpop.org is a great forum where a lot of nerdy people go to you know <laughs> like if i want to get more information you know what's happening you know what the developers are working on i yeah. go to bitcoinpop.org you know, okay get a lot of insights in there you know it was a really good website you know like especially uh prior to like the 2017 market and it's still like a good place to look for uh information yeah also when new coins are launched people post there the post information you know and it's, it's great you know for feedback and you know communicating with developers and along with the investors yeah you know it, it's more of the serious ones you know like and you have to register for this one you actually have okay to gotcha and um you know uh it's, it's a great forum you know it's a lot of you yeah know, well i mean there's I a, a lot of good a lot of good conversations come from forum boards because you know the, it gives you that different perspective of why something might be good and and then it kind of like yeah. then you can evaluate it yourself like oh yeah this is going to be good 
Oh yeah, definitely. You know, and it's not about fanboys like you know Reddit or 4chan yeah. or whatever. You know, <laughs> if it's, you know <laughs> where you know people that are really invested in the projects, people that yeah, you know, want to see the platforms grow, you know, mm-hmm. the directions. You know, this this is definitely where uh, people uh, definitely uh, come to look for info. And remember, I was talking about mining yeah, earlier. Yeah. You know, there are pretty much like two types of mining. Okay. It's proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of you know work is like what Bitcoin uses. It's hardware intensive. Okay. Know, uh, solving a ma- mathematical equation, you know, and when uh, a miner solves that, that's when they get rewarded. You okay. Know? So like you get a block, you know, whoever solves that block first, they get paid in Bitcoin, and that's oh, how Bitcoin okay. paid. In, that's how new Bitcoin comes into circulation. Okay. Yes, so, like, if I send you Bitcoin, whoever solves the block where I'm sending you Bitcoin, mm-hmm. they get rewarded with new oh, Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so that's written in a contract called a smart contract. When Satoshi Nakamoto created, you know, Bitcoin on the blockchain, he said, oh, when miners, you know, in, in the code language, when a miner solves the, uh, you know, equation, that's when new Bitcoin comes into the system. Oh, and then okay. the miners can hold on to the Bitcoin or they can sell it on an exchange. And that's how, you know, we're able to receive new Bitcoin. Gotcha. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And, and, and the that's, you know, miners, are, you know, proof of work miners are paid by how much work they do mm-hmm. in a block. So obviously, if you have more computers to solve that mathematical equation, more you can do. But now you're running into that problem of electricity. Yeah. You know, you're going to run up a crazy power. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So, but then there's proof of stake, you know, where people like you and I can be involved in. You know, like when okay. we buy tokens, um, we can uh, select a validator, which is somebody that set up their own mining okay. rate, which is uh, proof of stake, though. So, like, when we add our coins to his uh, network or his validator, uh-huh. we get a percentage oh, of, okay. you know, yeah, of what transactions of, that gotcha. he processes, you know, so okay. that's a, a way to earn crypto, yeah. you, know, by, you know, so if the coins work on proof of stake, you know, so the more coins you put up for staking, the more money you get back. Gotcha. Okay. And they normally tell you like the percentage. Yeah. You know, so it's like thirty six percent APR. You know, if I put up let's say ten thousand XYZ crypto and you put, you know, three hundred thousand XYZ crypto, obviously our rewards are gonna be yeah. different because okay. of how much we've put up. Gotcha, so, okay. You know, yeah, you're yeah, rewarded by how many coins you're holding. Yeah. And proof of stake is the one that's becoming more popular because it's less hardware intensive. Yeah. And, you know, you can stake from your mobile phone, you know, and you don't have to, you, you know, you, you don't have to be sitting around, you know, yeah. you know, my computer is still up and running or anything like that, you know. So can... is there is there a a risk in doing that, uh, you know, as far as putting putting your coins, I guess, on are you said on there, you know, running it through there? Is there a risk associated with doing that as well? You know, if their validator goes down, you know, but their validator is running on AWS, you know, gotcha. okay. contingents to yeah. AWS, you know, and they have go through a strict protocol in order to become a validator. Gotcha. Okay. They have to put up a lot of money yeah. in dollars yeah. and in crypto to become a validator. Okay. You know, so they're not going to let their yeah. computer go down. You know, Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, there's that kind of trust yeah. thing going on there. You know, that's mining and, uh, you know, proof of work state. And now, you know, it brings me to my last slide, which is exchanges, you know, yeah. where we buy and trade crypto. And here we have Coinbase at the bottom over here, which you mentioned. You know, <laughs> Coinbase is what I use as my entry point to the crypto world. Okay. You know, it's connected to my bank account. Yeah. So I'll buy Bitcoin or Ethereum and I'll send that over to one of these exchanges, KuCoin or Binance or whatever other exchange I've signed on. I'm signed yeah. up to one of the exchanges. 
So you might ask why, you know, not just to trade everything on Coinbase. That's because Coinbase only has a certain market. Okay. You know, they only have a certain amount of tokens that they list. Gotcha. KuCoin okay. and Binance list a lot more. You know, uh. so that's why I picked to go trade on like, you know, KuCoin and Binance because they have more markets there. Yeah. And so, but you buy in through Coinbase and then you, you transfer that Bitcoin over to your wallet and then you, or Ethereum, and then you go purchase on the other platforms? Is it? Exactly. Gotcha. Correct. And then when I'm ready to cash out, I'll sell those assets that I bought mm -hmm. from whatever other exchange. I'll convert them to Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, or whatever is accepted on Coinbase. Yeah. Then I'll send it back to Coinbase. I'll sell it to US dollar because Coinbase has the US dollar option. Okay. Then from there, I can send it to my PayPal or I can send it to my bank account. Okay. Directly from Coinbase after I've converted it to USD on Coinbase. Gotcha. Okay. So cool thing, go ahead. The cool thing about, you know, exchanges, you know, crypto exchanges is that they're 24 7. They don't go to sleep. No. You know? Yeah. And there are times where I might go to bed. And something that I bought is like five cents. I wake up the next day; it's gonna foot. You know, it's now forty-five cents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. So, so, plus. so yeah. in that regard, is it uh, is it more set on longer investments, or is it there? Is there short-term trading? Like, you know, what I've heard talks of bubbles, and you know, what what are those? You know, one the risk kind of associated with it, the volatility if it's there. Uh, and those other uh, things as well. Obviously, the risks out there with anything in life. Yeah, oh yeah. In the stock market, you know, a couple of months ago, people were buying uh, stocks for JC Penny, Hertz, and stuff <laughs> after the declared bankruptcy. Like, yeah. why are you, you know, yeah. they, they, were, they were hoping somebody would come along and buy, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. these bankrupt companies. But, you know, the, the, Creditors are the ones that are going to get paid first before it comes to shareholders and stuff. Yeah. You know, so obviously the risks are there. Just like with crypto, there are risks. That's how you should do your research. Read the white papers. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the robots. Understand, you know, and a lot of these cryptos, they have the people that are behind them. They have their LinkedIn profiles. Mm -hmm. So you can go to their LinkedIn, you know, if you want to look more. Gotcha. Into okay. What these people are running yeah. the company. And you go through their resume. So I like about it. So I normally do my research deep, you know, and thorough. Yeah. You know, to try and minimize, you know, especially like in my group, you know, people uh, pretty much um, ask, you know, for advice. So, you know, uh, it's not really advice. I'm just giving suggestions. Like, you, know, <laughs> your money, you know, yeah. I'm not a financial advisor, but, you know, I do my research in crypto. And, you know, I make lists of like, hey, you should do your research on this. And if you like it, you should buy it. Yeah. You, and if you like it. If you, you like it, you do you yeah. do your research. You understand what you're doing. And, and then if you like it, you buy it. You know, don't take yeah. my word for it. Yeah, I, I you know, and, and, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's a great way to make supplemental income. You know, like I said, I got a friend, you know, uh, what, my best friend a couple of years ago when he first got into it. You know, I was pretty skeptical about it. He put fifty dollars. Within eight months, that fifty dollars had become ten thousand dollars. Wow! And then fifty dollars to ten thousand. Imagine that. Yeah. And then uh, we took that ten k, spread it into other investments, and it became forty thousand dollars. Wow! <laughs> you know. Wow. So, and you know, you're you're asking, you know, is it long term or short term? You know, I like to say that uh, millionaires are day traders. Billionaires hold long term you know okay. if you look at yeah millionaires you know tim sykes and all those people they're trading you know doing day trades yeah short term if you look like at people like you know um uh that that guy uh warren buffett yeah yeah you no know, he's holding long term mm -hmm. so he's a billionaire you know yeah, he doesn't buy something and sell it in a year or two he's holding you know, when did he buy Berkshire Hat Hathaway? Yeah. You know, he bought that, you know what, back in the 60s or 70s, or, you know. <laughs> and held on. And, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, when it went public, I think it was worth like $7,000. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. And then now, one share of Ber- Berkshire Hathaway is like $300,000. Yeah. One share. That's crazy. You know, and so he bought it back in the, you know, 60s or yeah. 70s when it was probably like, you know, maybe $10,000. Yeah. yeah. So crypto has to be looked at in the, you know, same way, you know, because some of these companies are really, you know, building platforms that are starting to be taken seriously by governments and a bunch of different organizations you know that are making inroads into society and crypto is the next thing blockchain yeah. is the next thing that's the next step in the digital revolution as i had on the front page of my presentation yeah so uh i had a question that someone asked me to ask you about uh or ask you about self key and the uses it brings <laughs> Is, is that person in my group? Uh, <laughs> uh, possibly, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, he um, is. Yes, he is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned self key um, today. I don't know Let if he was go- in that group, but yeah, uh, okay. I definitely know he follows you and and, and listens to you. All right. Um, I'm gonna switch over to self key right now. Okay. This is self key right here. It's gonna be a big game changer. Because with self key, once you've gone through your KYC, you know your customer, mm-hmm. they're able to actually incorporate in a different country. Oh. You know, so I can access the marketplace and they don't tell me. So from this self key, their app, their desktop app, I'm able to incorporate directly from my home wow. in another country. And it shows you in Switzerland, for example, how much you pay for offshore tax, how huh. much you pay for corporation tax, you know, and what it's good for, everything it comes with, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah. for example, Cayman Islands, you know, I hit details, 0% offshore tax, 0%, wow. uh, you know, corporation tax, 0% capital gains. And I can incorporate right here from home, here Jeez. in Hollywood, Los Angeles, and it tells me, how much I pay in key and how much it is in the value of US dollars. And it also tells you what you get, you know, when you register in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. This is all that's included for 3,400. It it gives you the, you know, a description of the country as well. Any legal stuff, you know, taxes, you know, more country details, tax treaties, as you can see, there are no tax treaties with them. So, you know, yeah. if you're doing an offshore stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know, there ain't no tax treaties over there. Yeah. You know, so this is a uh, uh, show in Cayman Islands. You know, let's say we go to uh, Hong Kong. You know, Hong Kong has 0% offshore tax, 16% corporation tax, 0% capital gains. Hmm. And it will show you how much, you know, you pay. You can incorporate now. It shows you, you know, what you get with that payment, yeah. you know. Huh, that's and, really cool. You know, description, all that. But it does not stop there, Uh-oh. you know. In the marketplace, soon you'll be able to get passport and residencies right from here. What? You know, if it's coming soon, yeah. You know, if you qualify for it, you can apply right from the self-key wow. marketplace. Another great thing that I love about self-key is the bank accounts. So let's say you don't want to incorporate, you can open a bank account abroad, Wow! right from self-key, because they've talked with other banks mm-hmm. and uh, in different countries, so you're able to actually open a bank account. You know, eligibility, non-resident individuals, it already wow. tells you. It tells you the minimum deposit. It tells you what it's good for. It even tells you if you have to do any personal visits, like in yeah. person, once you try, once you apply for it. And most of all, you don't have to do any in person visits. And the cool thing is that they will send you debit cards and everything associated with your bank account mm-hmm. that you've opened in Sage Country. You know. So, for example, let's say uh, right here at the bottom, you want to open one in S- Switzerland. You know. Yeah, it would tell you your minimum initial deposit and what your monthly balance should be. It would tell you how long it's going to take to open. 
what kind of cards that you can get with oh, them. Oh, okay. You know, it's, you know, it goes more in detail over here, uh, what you get, you know, huh. account types, you know, description, you know, of what, what yeah. it is, you know, Switzerland, what member they are in the banking world, you know, more Switzerland population, uh, that sort of thing, you know. Let's say you want to open uh, one in uh, Czech Republic, you know, no personal visit needed. It could take about three to four weeks, you know, MasterCard that you get, MasterCard yeah. Gold. And now it shows you the price, how much, you know, hmm. $150. That's no crazy. Reason. Yeah, and you can do all this, you know, that's why I say crypto is going to change the world. Yeah. Another crazy thing is that you can do wealth management, <laughs> you know, <laughs> So if you're building trust and all that, you know, for your future generation, oh, wow. you can apply for it right here and, you know, it'll give you huh. the details of, you know, the account types, yeah. description and all that. You know, if you're going to do wealth management in uh, Hong Kong, for example, it will tell you everything that's available. So uh, self-key, it's crazy. Yeah, you know? that's... Uh... That's insane. I, um, huh, I'd never heard of that. So, yeah. You know, this is what millionaires do millionaires and billionaires. Yeah. They do stuff like this because they have the money to go to attorneys, yeah. you know, to financial people that do this for them. Mm -hmm. But now crypto is opening that door for us, you know, for us people that ain't millionaires yeah. but are on our way there. Yeah. You know, so. Now we have our foot in the door. So is this all blockchain as well? Mm-hmm. Mm. Stealth Key is a cryptocurrency. Okay, I got you. This is your app. This is gotcha. their app that okay. they have. So you can buy Stealth Key from the exchange, send it to their app. You know, I downloaded this app. And from there, you can use that cryptocurrency, the Stealth Key cryptocurrency, for uh, the stuff that they have gotcha. on the okay. Stealth Key uh, marketplace. Okay. Wow, that's really, really interesting. I'm going to have to look more into this. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, man. Like, cryptocurrency is really going to disrupt a lot of industries. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, the, what did they say? The early bird catches the worm, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I mean, the early birds that caught Bitcoin at first, you know, are, are sitting pretty pretty nice right now. So. Oh, big time. Big time, man. Big time. You know, so... Yeah, man. You know, uh, just wanted to share that. You know, absolutely. I uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming on a lot. I um, you know, I I'm kind of out of out of questions. Uh, you know, I I really appreciate you coming on and kind of educating people and, and myself on what you know what the blockchain is and what cryptocurrencies are and and kind of to to start to understand it. So, I think I agree with you that it's going to revolution or change the world. Uh, you know, it's already here as far as revolutionizing it and uh you know finding out these other systems with blockchain is just uh you start to see how much it can actually disrupt things oh yeah definitely definitely man we're not we're not even at the beginning you know when yeah we're just, like still in our infant <laughs> you know, we haven't even started crawling yet you know we're trying to roll over our back you know, yeah like, onto our stomach now, you know, that's what right now. yeah <laughs> Well, would you like to do any type of uh, uh, promotion, like to shout out your page or what you do or, you know, any courses that you might want people to enroll in or anything like that? Yeah, you know, if people want to join my, uh, you know, blockchain group on Facebook, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrency, um, I have a tagline there. I forgot what, what it says, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I share it on my Facebook page quite often. So okay. if people go on my Facebook page, they'll be able to see it. I'm only going to allow a thousand members in it because I want to keep it a nice, tight, small community. Gotcha. You know, because yep. my last Bitcoin and blockchain group went up to 13,000 members and it oh. just became like yeah. <laughs> hard to control. You oh, know? yeah, absolutely. So this one, I'm only going to cap it out at a thousand people. Gotcha. The only way people will be able to get in after it reaches a thousand people is if somebody leaves, you know. Or if someone's put it out yeah. so right now we're at 862 people oh so it's filling up quick yeah <laughs> so, it's about to fill up. so if anyone wants to come join in well uh, i will uh i will tag that and tag the page in uh in this as well 
And um, I once again, thanks a lot for coming on, Tanache. And uh, it's been great talking with you. I appreciate it, man. Uh, good luck. And uh, yeah, man, uh, thanks for having me on your uh, podcast. Thank you very much. And you too, sir.